Hi everyone, welcome to our webinar about traffic interpolation. My name is Nathalie and at Mac I'm responsible for everything concerning marketing and communications. So this also means the organization and planning of our webinars. Um, I am gonna give the words to Kenneth. He's one of our data scientists who is uh, actively working on the traffic interpolation project. But before we get started, I would like to ask you that if you have any questions, you can always ask them in the Q&A section the chat box, and you can find it below um, on the screen. So Kenneth, the floor is all yours. So, um, uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Kenneth Tube. I'm a data scientist that uh, actually started uh, the work on interpolation more than one year ago. So welcome to this webinar. I hope you uh, will enjoy and learn. Uh, something about interpolation this time. So uh, I will go through first presenting the data science team, then uh, the interpolation problem, and uh, what we propose as interpolation pipeline uh, at Mac. Uh, then I will just uh, finish with uh, the future work. So some of the improvements we want to do over interpolation. And uh, at the end, we will have a questions and answer session. So you can ask uh, any question you have during the presentation. Um, so who is uh, the data science team? Who are? Uh, uh, we are a team of five people. So our team leader is uh, uh, Bruno Corneli. So he is uh, a professor at the uh, University in Brussels, so VUB. Uh, this is myself, Kenneth Uwea, so I am a data scientist, uh, basically leading uh, le the developments on uh, interpolation. Uh, we have uh, Matthias Michils, which uh, um, it's in charge of all the analytics uh, parts. Uh, we have Guillaume Latour, which is helping us with uh, data engineering and uh, tasks. And we have uh, Alexandros Musas, which help us with uh, 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 also with analysis, with benchmarks of uh, different uh, uh, data sets that uh, we have and produce. So um, what do we do? We work a lot with uh, uh, traffic analysis, so mainly traffic analysis and also multimodal traffic uh, modeling. We have uh, built some uh, mobility studies. We have made some consultancy, uh, consultancy uh, studies also. And the idea is that we, uh, we can uh, integrate our work, so core functionalities for the MQ platform, which is the Mac mobility management platform. And uh, we have done some uh, interpolation uh, work, some uh, analysis of some polysons, uh, as for example, Vorkempen. Uh, and we also like to make uh, research and collaborate with uh, universities and research uh, institutes. So we can uh, develop uh, uh, new solutions, uh, understand new technologies. So we um, continually have some uh, internships, internships uh, coming from universities. Also, we work together with some uh, master uh, thesis students. And so uh, let's move on to the interpolation problem, which is the main uh, topic of this uh, webinar. So for that, I took uh, this picture. Uh, so basically, uh, the interpolation problem consists on giving estimation of uh, traffic metrics in segments of the road of a road network where we don't have any sensor of or source of information. So for example, here uh, triangles are uh, represent those segments on a road network. So this is an example of a road network uh, where we don't have any um, sensor of source of information and circles are uh, segments of the road network where we have sensors or uh, any type of source of information that give us some uh, met, uh, traffic metrics, uh, some measurements, right? So the idea is to, to, to use those uh, places, those segments, so those sources of information associated to segments 
to give estimations on, on those places where we didn't have any uh, information. So for example, this part of the network, we don't have any information. So we use uh, the sensor that we have here available to give an estimation here. So the same here, we have a sensor here, but we didn't have information here or in here. So we use these sensors to give uh, an estimation of uh, traffic metrics in this part of the network that we, uh, uh, where we don't have any information. So uh, in this example, uh, you can see that the number of vehicles um, is, is, is changing. Uh, this is basically a uh, given, so uh, a static point in time. So we can imagine that this is uh, the state of the, of the road network at 7 p.m. Uh, uh, and then uh, you can see that uh, through the interpolation, we can identify some uh, congestions or, or some uh, uh, some roads that are more heavily used uh, than others. So we can actually study uh, the evolution of traffic as a time series. Uh, so uh, after interpolating or having an interpolated network, we basically uh, can't uh, um, take each segment of the network and study it as a time series. So we can, what can, what, infor, what kind of information we can extract? Okay, we can extract, for example, here we see that uh, um, in the afternoon, in these points, we have a peak. So a highest uh, amount of vehicles at this moment in, in time, whether, uh, uh, the other times are less used. So for example, you can plan when to, to do some uh, maintenance in your, in your road networks, in which segments you can do it in the morning or which segment you can do it in the afternoon or early in the morning or at night. Uh, so this is the kind of information that you can extract in uh, segments of the network where you don't have actually any sensor. So this is the interesting part. And you can also do it uh, where you have uh, sensors. So uh, what are the general uh, applications of interpolation? Uh, they are basically uh, filling gaps. So filling gaps really means uh, give estimation of traffic metrics in segments of the, of the network where there is no source of information. But also means that uh, um, you can uh, fill gaps in segments of, of the network where you have sensors, but when these sensors are faulty or they are not working correctly. This is something that happened very often after I studied a lot this, um, this um, uh, traffic. We, we see that uh, sensors are really all the time giving uh, some measurements that are not uh, really accurate. So we, the idea is to, to also fill these gaps. So sometimes you don't have any information at all coming from a sensor. So you can, with interpolation process, fill these gaps. You can also, as I mentioned before, identify congestions or uh, also study the evolution of the traffic situation in time and also in space. Uh, so all of that to facilitate uh, taking decisions such as, okay, we give maintenance uh, at this time or at this time, or, or we close this road, or what is the impact of an accident uh, uh, or that happened in a segment in the rest of the road network. So all of that, uh, it's within, uh, should be done by the, an in-depth study uh, of the road network after we interpolate it. Um, so this is uh, basically it. So to be more precise, uh, we have, uh, so we already are working on, on a project where we apply interpolation, it's the Trademix project. This uh, basically involves the Wallonian work government and uh, we work with, uh, uh, we use uh, interpolation, for example, to, uh, be using the shadow tolling. So the shadow tolling, you know, it's uh, the it's the amount of money that uh, uh, the government pays per car uh, to maintain the, the 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 road infrastructure in, in Wallonia. So also it can be used for uh, the control uh, fee for the the heavy vehicles, so plus three point five tons of vehicles. So they all have, for example, 
an onboard unit, and they are constantly giving uh, the GPS location uh, during uh, in the in the road network. So with this, we can control where they are, how many of they they are. Are they actually following the the rules of traffic, the maximum speed limit, which is different from the light vehicles. So these kind of, of, of applications that we work uh, with, uh, this interpolation for the Trademex project. Uh, so let's uh, uh, let's uh, move a bit. So we have, uh, we have uh, developed and built uh, interpolation uh, pipeline here at at Mac with all the team of uh, data science, and I was will present them. Uh, I'll present it uh, uh, and try to go step uh, by step, uh, so you have a, a, a better picture of how the interpolation works inside. So we have uh, four big steps: the collection of the data, the pre-processing of the data, uh, the interpolation itself, and the post-processing. So that's why this is not like. A, interpolation system but it's more like an interpolation pipeline because we have we start from the collection to the pre-processing interpolation and then the post-processing so in collection of the data we collect data from different devices and different sources like counting loops uh, fixed uh, npr cameras mobile npr cameras the onboard unit uh, uh, data from these heavy vehicles and then we have um, two important steps in pre-processing. One is the fusion of the data, which means taking all of this uh, data that we have collected and then uh, try to aggregate this data, to classify this data and to qualify this data. So we don't directly use this uh, data, but we process this data so we can uh, um, create uh, the proper input interpretation. Also, something that is really important uh, to solve this problem is the abstraction of the road network. Uh, we uh, based our solution with OpenStreetMaps. I will show you later what does it mean. And uh, basically, we extract some features from OpenStreetMaps to enrich uh, the information that we have of our road network, like, for example, the number of lanes, uh, the maximum speed limit, um, the type of road, uh, which are uh, very important information that we use for uh, interpolation. Something that is really interesting is that uh, the solution uh, that we propose, uh, we can apply this to different referential networks. Why is that? Because we are based on the open street maps and we combine uh, the uh, data from the referential networks in, and open street maps to be able to adapt and to translate our results to any other referential network. So this is from pre-processing. Then we have the interpolation itself that is based on a, uh, on a clearing approach, which is a geostatistical uh, technique, very well known for uh, spatial interpolation. We tried different methods, but at the end, we were uh, really happy for many reasons uh, with uh, the clearing interpolation. So in the first processing step, we basically uh, um, transform the output of interpolation into traffic uh, metrics that are interesting uh, for clients. And also uh, we aggregate uh, segments and we produce some visualizations uh, for, for the interpolation results. So uh, if we concentrate a bit more in this step of the, the pipeline, I first will give a general overview and I will, I will go back to Trademex so you see how we apply this pipeline into the, uh, into the Trademex project. I think this is really interesting. But uh, let's now concentrate in the generality of, uh, of the interpolation. So if we concentrate in the pre-processing step, as I was uh, telling you before, we based our solution in open street maps. What does it mean? So what we do is that uh, we take the road network and we split this road network in segments, right? So uh, we based the split of our segments in open street maps. They are already have an abstraction of this uh, road network of the uh, this is what you see. What you see is the Wallonian road network. And you have different type of roads. For example, we work with motorways, trunks, primary roads, secondary roads, tertiary roads. And also we have a, a, everything that is exit entrance is uh, a link, a link from one type of road to another 
type of road. So for example, that you have motorway links that can be can, that can connect to trunks, to primary roads, or to secondary roads. You have troll links that can be connected to primary uh, roads, secondary roads, and so on and so forth. So what you see here in the map, uh, it's uh, um, the, the, the road network, uh, and you see in colors the different type of, of roads, but you also observe, you can also observe uh, the different sensors that we have in this uh, road network. So in orange, we have counting loops. In uh, green, we have um, uh, fixed ANPR cameras, so MAC cameras. And we also have some mobile uh, NPR cameras that, all, that only stay in place like for three days and they, they move to a different location. So uh, if you can see in this, uh, in this image in the, in the left, you will see how we split the different segments. We have a segment here that stops here. And then another segment starts here. This is basically an, an exit, so a link. And then we split it's also in a third segment. So this portion of the network that you see here in red is split in three different segments. Okay, so first segment, second segment, and third segment. And this is happening in all around the road network. So everything is split in, in, in multiple uh, segments. So we have around uh, uh, 10,000 different segments that we have to interpolate in this road network. Um, so this is uh, how we abstract the, the, uh, the road network and then how we qualify the data that we, we, we think it's the right input for interpolation. So we work with three different metrics. Uh, so what you see here are uh, quality matrices uh, that have uh, counting loops or cameras, so sensors in, in, as rows and it ha uh, they have uh, as columns the day of a month. So what you see is one month of the quality of a sensor here. So everything that is green is good and everything that is red is not good. How do we calculate this? This is basically uh, the deviation. So we take uh, one sensor, we take one month of data and we say, okay, this is uh, the normal behavior of the sensor. Now let's see how the de how deviated are each day from this uh, from 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 this um, uh, normal or usual behavior of the sensor, and then we qualify and we say, okay, this is uh, one uh, hundred percent deviated, eighty percent deviated, sixty percent deviated. So uh, what we do is put a threshold, and uh, so we parameterize this, and we say we will accept everything that is uh, no more than um 20 percent deviated so this is the data that we will use but this is not uh the only metric that we developed we also sorry uh develop uh some metrics to find gaps uh and the, uh, and it's the same what is we see here it's a, a quality matrix uh that represents the behavior of a sensor during one month so the idea is to avoid this type of a scenario. So as you see uh, here, sorry, uh, a gap. And this gap is not really, uh, it has a negative impact over the final results after interpolation. So we try to just remove this gap and to avoid uh, this by detecting it with this uh, uh, developed metric. So what we want to see is something more like this type of, of a scenario. You can see it in the right, image and avoid these type of scenarios. So uh, the last uh, um, metric that we use to uh, filter or to qualify our data is the roller coaster. So this is uh, what we are trying to achieve is find um, uh, the sudden uh, changes, uh, sudden drops uh, on, on data that are not actually uh, a normal behavior of the data. This might be just uh, a sensor that is faulty for uh, a given period of time, or, or simply uh, something is not, not working correctly. And uh, we want to just uh, detect those um, 
uh, wrong behaviors or abnormal behaviors to remove them from the data and not we, we don't replace them because uh, we want to avoid putting some uh, kind of bias in, into our results. So uh, we qualify the data in this way. We just remove what we uh, what we uh, think is not good after put uh, after pass uh, the data through these uh, three different metrics. So the deviation, uh, the gaps, and the roller coaster. Uh, so if we uh, so this is for from the part of uh, really preprocessing. Now we move on to the part of interpolating itself, and then here I will explain uh, what we offer as interpolation. So what kind of features do we offer? So um, the our interpolation method is able to to um, fusion different types of data. So counting loops in VR cameras, onboard unit data, TomTom -tom data, so GPS system data. So uh, to, to, um, to one, uh, let's say a standard uh, type of input. So it, uh, so the interpolation understands it. And then uh, uh, we are able to interpolate two type of traffic metrics. So we uh, now interpolate count, and speed. So uh, this is the two metrics that we are now able to interpolate. As I mentioned before, this is a creaking-based uh, approach. Uh, we try to make really in-depth benchmarkings to see how well we can do, what are the scenarios where we are good and which scenarios we are not good because of the situation on the road network. And uh, we, we are able to run uh, interpolation in two different uh, modes, if you want, or flavors. So we have the batch mode. So the batch mode means that uh, we make an interpolation that is offline. So to give you an example, we take uh, uh, all the uh, measurements of one month. So let's say we are now in December, we take all the measurements on November. And then after having taken this, we make an interpolation of November. So really just uh, in, in offline. So we, you will have your interpolation of November in the first days of December. The second one that is really interesting, it's we try to do it in near real time. So it's basically an interpolation that is giving results every five minutes. And it gives you the state of the uh, road network every every five minutes. But this can be changed to, for example, instead of every five minutes, every uh, 50 minutes, every 30 minutes. So it depends on the needs of, of, of uh, the client. So these are the two different modes of interpolation that, um, uh, that we have. So um, uh, again, you see here in this map, uh, all the blue points are points uh, that represent a segment in the open street map abstraction of the road network. And everything that is orange are uh, sensors that we use to interpolate. As you might uh, have noticed, uh, we have a lot more missing points than sensors. And this is what we call an sparse road network. So this is uh, something that have added uh, some level of complexity to, uh, to the problem because uh, in, in general, when you uh, read papers, when you see solutions, you see just uh, more actually sensors than missing points in the, in the network for interpolation. So this has uh, been a challenge, but uh, after some time of, of understanding the problem and knowing the right tools, we have achieved to give something that is, um, um, that is uh, good enough as estimations. So uh, what is inside the traffic interpolation? We use a regression method called uh, the creaking interpolation. To be more precise, we use external drift creaking. So what is the, the creaking interpolation? The creaking interpolation uh, is a geostatistical method for spatial, spatial interpolation. And it was uh, um, developed to, uh, to, to find um, sources of oil in the soil. So the idea behind uh, the creaking is that you could take some samples as you can see in this image. So every point that you see there that has a value is a sample in, in, 
in, in part of a land. And, and each of these samples will give Kriging uh, uh, the, the, uh, some information to produce what you see in the background, the colors. So the idea was to really find the places where finding oil was most likely. So uh, the, the person that created this, created this creaking for that reason. So this is what we call uh, the spatial interpolation. And what creaking does is really take, um, let's say, uh, the value of every uh, sample that it has and try to produce an estimation on every point that is, uh, 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 missing in the in this case in this uh, in this matrix, but what we use is called external drift clicking. So I put uh, sorry uh, an image here of what external clicking means, and I think it's very intuitive, and you will see why we use this. So external drift clicking uh, um, drift uh, the word drift in this uh, in this name means trend. So it's a synonym of trend. So what we do is use trends of the traffic in time and in space. Uh, and then we apply clicking to these trends with the conditions. So in this case, conditions are the samples that we take. And the samples that we, that we take are uh, measurements of traffic metrics that are uh, close in time to the period that we want to interpolate. So for example, if we want to interpolate the road network at 9 a.m., we, we take data of 9 a.m. as conditions to uh, try to correct the trend or the drift uh, in, in the road network so we can give an interpolation, uh, an interpolation in the whole road network. So this is what happened or what we are trying to achieve is what you see here in this plot. Basically, you have a drift, so this is a trend. Then you have the conditions. So the conditions you see that are a bit higher. So we are trying to, to correct this trend using these conditions with the help of creating. So this is what we do. So to give you a more precise example of what we do with uh, traffic, uh, here, uh, what uh, you see here in the right is a. Uh, uh, a part of the road network that we studied in Wallonia. So we have in blue, we have uh, sensors and in red, we have uh, missing points. So the idea is to use these blue points, all of them that we have here to drive some estimations in this part of the road network in a space, but also in time. So uh, the results of uh, interpolation are here in the left. So here, here you see a three-dimensional space where you have latitude, longitude, and the time, so the hour of the day. So from zero, which is midnight, uh, to 24, uh, to 23, which is uh, 23 p.m. Uh, in the night. Uh, so you see here in three dimensions what is happening in this portion of the network during one day. So we have... Uh, at 5 p.m., what is happening? At 10 a.m., what is happening? At 5, uh, 15 p.m., what is happening? You see? And, and here we can clearly see, for example, a trend in time where very early in the morning and very night, we have very few cars. You see, like less than 100 cars. But during peak hours, maybe between 6 and 8, uh, 8 a.m., we have a very high amount of, of, of cars that are passing through this road, right? Then uh, in the afternoon, we also have more values, but they are less than in the, in the morning. So it means that we have in this portion of the network, a peak uh, value in the, in the morning. So most likely people that is going to work, for example. So uh, we see uh, the trends in time, but we can also see how these uh, values are fading out in a space. So basically, depending on where you are placed in the road network, uh, you will have less or more um, uh, vehicles during the same hours. Uh, so I think this is a very interesting graph and visualization that help us to understand what do we do and how do we use Kriegen to interpolate. Uh, then I think a very powerful concept that we use is the drift terms. And I explain what do we mean by drift terms uh, and by 
trends in this case. And what we do is that we use historical data. So we take the last six months of data of, uh, let's say, every counting loop or every camera or every um, source of data that we associate to a road uh, segment. And then we produce what we see here at the bottom. We see a weekly trend. So let's say this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We create this, uh, this, this trend. And this trend is what you were, uh, I, what I was explaining here. This is the trend that we have. And this is a trend, sorry, uh, in time. So it's still the trending in space. We have to we have to find this trend in the space of uh, of traffic. So what we do is we use uh, propagation techniques uh, to propagate these trends through the uh, road network. So this is just for illustration purposes. Let's imagine that we have five different sensors, uh, only five sensors in the network. So if we run uh, the propagation algorithm that we use to um, uh, through the network, this is uh, the final result. You will see that uh, uh, red, you will find red values in this zone because this zone is more connected to the part of the network where the sensor is located. So uh, the, our algorithm of propagation basically follows the physical structure of the row network to propagate the information, the trends that we produce just here. So each of the points or the stars that you see here have a different trend in time, and then we propagate them uh, through the road network, and then we, we have this kind of, of results. Of course, we, we use different propagation techniques if we want to interpolate cons or if we want to interpolate speed, because they are different trends. Um, so this is uh, and the idea of propagation. And to be more and more, more precise, in, uh, 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 why these terms are good for us is uh, they are good because they allow us to use historical data, so past data of traffic, and also allow us to deploy the, our solution of interpolation in real time. Because this is uh, these drift terms is something that don't need to be uh, updated every five minutes, but more uh, every week or every month. This is something that we can do, let's say, offline. So learn the trends in the long term, and then with the conditions, adapt the behavior of the trends uh, to give results in real time. So then the drip terms are assigned to the label propagation algorithm. And then uh, something that is really interesting that happens here is that since uh, the propagation follows uh, the physical connection of the roads in, in the road network, we can achieve to take into account directionality. So for example, here, uh, this is a sum of this part of the road network. So in this, uh, let's say, um, part of, of, uh, of, uh, of the screen, you see a propagation, but with all the sensors that we have uh, uh, for the interpolation. So then you will see more, much more colors. But I zoom in in an example, so you have, uh, two different sensors in two, in two different directions. And then you can see here that in one direction we have this the, the green, then they overlap in here in this uh, other direction. But uh, why is this interesting? Why is it important to take the directionality to account? We know that maybe one, uh, uh, one uh, sense of the road, so one in one direction, we could have a uh, peak of vehicles in the morning, but in the other side, we should have uh, in the afternoon. So if we don't take this uh, directionality into account, we uh, the intercalation will be missing these uh, peak values. So we will be more generic, but the propagation algorithm allow us to uh, be more precise at the moment of interpolating. Um, another, feature of our traffic interpolation model is that is, uh, let's say, a multimodal or class of vehicle agnostic because uh, 
we can interpolate for short vehicles, but we can also interpolate for, for long vehicles. When I say short, it's more like uh, light vehicles, like normal cars, and heavy vehicles, more like trucks and uh, bigger type of, of, of vehicles. So our interpolation uh, um, system is able to interpolate into two different and separate uh, classes of vehicles. So just here, uh, why is that important? Because uh, uh, the behavior on light vehicles or short vehicles is really different to what we see for uh, long or heavy vehicles. Um, so this is good. So here is how we, uh, I, I showed you an example of how we assess our um, interpolation uh, system. And what we do, it's basically remove sensors to simulate some missing uh, or uh, unknown locations, locations where we don't have sensors. And then we validate with the true value of these sensors to see if we are uh, doing okay or uh, how well we are doing with respect of, uh, of the sensors that we remove. So this is really hard problem because it's very difficult to, to assess if you are uh, performing good or not, or if the algorithm uh, is performing good or not in the places where you don't have data at all. So that's why we try to remove some sensors, but by removing, we also kind of um, uh, affect the, the raw network, because as I showed you before, we have much more um, points where we don't have sensors than points where we do have sensors. So uh, it's very hard uh, problem to assess, but I think uh, we are uh, doing a, a good job. So uh, I, I, I can ask you just to, to, to see the blue and the orange lines, which are the orange lines are the results of our latest version of interpolation. And uh, the blue values are uh, the true values of the, uh, of the counting loop that we remove to test this. So you can see that uh, we, when we compare, we have very close uh, results. Plus when uh, the, the, the sensor was giving no values, we were still able to uh, give some estimations that uh, seem plausible with respect to the days where we do have values. So this is all the work that is uh, behind interpolation. I hope it wasn't that much of a uh, technical part, but I, I, I think it was important so you could see what is inside. Um, and then, um, as I told you before, uh, the idea was to see how this was applied to the Tradimex project. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically we have this, this chart that shows uh, what is the interaction of the interpolation with different sources of data and different other modules in the mo uh, Mac Mobility platform that we use uh, for, uh, for analyzing processing data. So we have uh, some, uh, um, you, can, you can read this bottom up or uh, I think it's, it's, it's better. We have in the bottom some different sources of data. So the onboard unit data, the counting loops data, the cameras data, some GPS system uh, data like TomTom. And uh, we input this into, into the pipeline of, uh, of the interpolation. And we achieve to give some, um, let's say, estimations. And after giving estimations, two things can happen. The idea is that we can generate some statistics, some traffic metrics, and also uh, the idea is to give a prediction over the interpolated results. So we can we can have a full state uh, uh, of of the network in the uh, in, in the future. So this is uh, really interesting. This is still in progress. We haven't yet uh, finished this. So interpolation, it's uh, almost done and we are working uh, on, on prediction. But the final idea is that we will be able to interpolate and then predict these results to give a forecasting of what is happening in the road network. Also, uh, some of the things that are still in, in progress is the usage of uh, accidents data, uh, roadworks uh, data, and weather data. 
I think uh, we want to make our interpolation system robust enough to take into account accidents, roadworks, and weather data. Uh, I think this is uh, something very interesting to, to, to implement in this, uh, in this solution, and we are working on that. So as, uh, as I told you, I, I went back and to the pipeline, but now in the collection of the data. So basically in, Tratim, in the Tratimex project, we have different types of, we use different types of, of data. We use uh, NPR cameras data, we have loops data, we have OBU data, we use TomTom data. So we use different, uh, really a lot of, uh, of different sources. And uh, we want to add more sources, like for example, Coyote data, Telram data, uh, to improve our accuracy in the, in the interpolated network. The Tradimex, to give you a, a, an example, or so you can um, see more or less uh, the, the, or, the dimensionality of, of the network, we have 1,874 road segments that we have to interpolate, and only uh, one eighth of, uh, of them are equipped with uh, sensors. So for us, it's really uh, a sparse network. Plus, uh, each uh, road segment in the Tradimex road network actually is uh, composed by multiple OSM segments. So there is a phase of, um, of translation uh, or, or, or matching between OSM network segments and uh, Tratimex segments. So this is a, a task that is also adding a layer of complexity to, to, to the problem. So um, to give you an example of what kind of processing we do with the data, I think uh, the OBU data, it's a, a, a nice example because uh, what you see here in, 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 in the most left image, uh, you see measurements. So everything that is red are measure, measurements of OBU uh, vehicles or onboard units vehicles uh, in, the, in, in Belgium. So each of these vehicles has a unique identifier. So we take each of these uh, uh, identifiers that are unique and we, we, we try to retrace or rebuild the path that was taken. Why? Why is that? Because sometimes you see here, maybe it's not uh, so clear, but we didn't have measurement of each uh, vehicle in every segment of the road networks. So uh, in order to give more uh, precise results, we reconstruct the path of the, of the vehicle. And then we, we assign counts to every segment that, um, uh, the vehicle passed uh, uh, during his his uh, journey. So this is what we do with OBU, and this is, uh, for example, the final result of an interpolation on the OBU data. And we see that uh, actually it uh, uh, it uh, makes sense. We see that uh, those roads that you see in green are most likely uh, roads uh, like primary roads or more local roads, and then you see like the big axis. Uh, like in the N4, the National 4, and other uh, type of highways or motorways are more, more much charged than uh, the little roads in the network. So um, that's it. So as, um, as post-processing, the idea is to put all the information on everything that I just explained before into some uh, meaningful plots, meaningful statistics in MQ. So MQ is the Mac Mobility Manager, is the platform that, the platform that I talk about uh, since the beginning. And the idea is to put everything uh, uh, after interpolation, the results of interpolation, and create some metrics and some meaningful uh, uh, statistics uh, in, M in MQ. So you see here that uh, we will have some, some some maps telling some information, how busy or the level of service of the different, different road networks, uh, the different information for each uh, segment, also uh, the load in each, um, each lane of the road, also how many uh, heavy vehicles do you have in a segment, or how many uh, uh, light vehicles do you, do you, 
do you have in the last 15 minutes in a specific sense, uh, a specific segment? Also, um, uh, the status of uh, the different uh, sensors that we have in the network. So the client really has, or the final user really has a full control of, of what is happening in the road network. So I'm almost uh, uh, finished. So I, I will just uh, give you some, some words on what we are planning to improve and what are we uh, going to, to do in, in the future with this interpolation. So uh, we want to, to pass from really loop technology to big data. This means uh, uh, using um, um, uh, MMR models, uh, smart cameras make uh, uh, really a combination of different sources of information that uh, to, to really give more precise results. And some important uh, improvement that we want to do is include, uh, sorry, uh, machine learning to continuously and to automatically improve the quality of our, of our interpolation results. So the idea is to combine machine learning in such a way that each time we have uh, information on the road, on the segments where we didn't have any sensor that we know that is good, that uh, our system will automatically and continuously improve uh, from, from, from this new data. So the idea is to give any data or to input any data to the system that we know that is good to improve uh, automatically uh, the, the next or the future results uh, on, the, on the interpolation. Also, uh, we are open to, to collaborate with, uh, with uh, research institutes or universities or any student. So if any of you in, in, the, in the public is interested in working or researching or a researching project uh, for, uh, for this type of, of, of applications like interpolation or anything that is uh, related to traffic analytics, uh, you are welcome. You can contact us um, after uh, the, the webinar. So uh, I think um, that is it. I hope I didn't uh, bore you so much and you uh, learn a little bit about uh, interpolation. Thank you so much, so, Kenneth. It was very interesting. Um, I see that in the meantime, so far no questions have come in in the Q&A chat box. Um, anyway, I want you guys to know that we're always open to answer any questions. This webinar will also be posted. Uh, we're recording it as we speak and we will also post it on our web webinar section on our website. Um, so you can always rewatch it afterwards. Thank you very much for coming and hope to see you soon. Bye.